Here we have some of the hardest questions in VCE Specialist Maths on probability and stats. This exam 1 question had a 30% success rate. This exam 2 question on the difference of sample means, 23%. And this type 2 error question, wait for it, 11%. First question, 2019, exam 1, question 3. It's about a machine that produces chocolate in the form of a continuous cylinder. Part A was to find the expected volume, and students found that fine. The tricky one was part B, which asked to find the variance. Only 30% of students answered this correctly. So, what do we know? It's a cylinder. So the volume should be pi r squared times the height. We told the radius is fixed at 0.5, and the height is going to correspond to the length that's given in the question. So it's actually a random variable. We're told the lengths of the pieces vary with a mean of 3 and a standard deviation of 0.1, so that's going to be our random variable for the height. Once we know that, we're trying to find the variance of the volume, which is pi r squared h. R is 0.5, so we can plug that straight in. And now what we have is actually a constant times the height. Okay, pi times 0.5 squared is some constant. So we're going to need this formula for variance of ax plus b. We don't have a b, but our a is essentially uh, 0.25 pi. So we're going to take that out and square it, and then times that by the variance of h. The variance of h is 0.1 squared, so then we just need to calculate uh, this thing with a lot of decimal places. It turns out to be 0 0.0000... Uh, there it is on the screen. Actually, this question is easier to work out using fractions, so I'll show how that would look if we use fractions. So the 0 0.5 becomes a half, so we would have pi over 4. When we square that, we would get pi squared over 16, and we're multiplying by uh, 1 tenth squared, which is 1 over 100, so we'll get pi squared over 1600. So yeah, it turned out to be easy using fractions, because we're squaring things fractions. We just square the top, square the bottom. It's generally a bit easier than working with decimals. All right, next up, same year, exam two, question 6b. It's another food question. A company produces packets of noodles and so on with, they're normally distributed. The one that students found hard uh, was part B, and this one had a success rate of 23%. So it's asking the probability that the means of the two random samples differ by less than two grams. So we want to find the probability that uh, the absolute value of a minus b is less than 2. We need an absolute value because a could be greater than b, b could be greater than a, but the difference in absolute value just needs to be less than 2. So if we set up a random variable for a minus b, if we find the probability that that random variable is between negative 2 and 2, then that would give us the probability uh, that the difference is less than 2. So we need a probability distribution for our difference, so we need to go back to the variables a and b, which are random samples. We're told that for each packet of noodles, the mean is 375 and standard deviation is 15. Because we have a random sample of 50 packets, the mean is still 375, but the standard deviation is going to be 15 on the square root of 50. So we're using our formula sigma over root n for a random sample of n things. Uh, that is going to be the same as a as it is for b. Now the difference is also going to be normal because it's a linear combination of normal variables. And actually the mean is just going to be zero. That's using our formula for the expected value uh, of a linear combination of random variables. We have here expected value of a minus b. 
So in that formula, little a would be 1, little b would be negative 1. So it turns out we'll just have expected value of a minus expected value of b. Now those expected values are both 375 grams, so when we subtract them, we just get 0. For the variance, we're using a similar formula, uh, but it's now a squared variance of x plus b squared variance of y. Again, little a is 1, little b is negative 1, because we've still got a minus b. So when we square that little b, what we actually get is variance of a plus variance of b. It might seem a little bit counterintuitive that the variance of a minus b is actually the sum of the two variances, um, but it does make sense when you think about it that the variance of that is actually going to be larger. Anyway, that's the formula. So we have the two standard deviations, we'll square them to get the variances and then add them. Now it's a bit of a it's a bit of a long formula there, but luckily we have our calculator, and again we need to square root to get back to the standard deviation. If we put that in our calculator, we'd find that it all turns out nicely to be 3. So once we have that, our difference d is now just a normal random variable with a mean of 0, standard deviation of 3. And we can just use our CAS calculator to find the probability that that is between negative 2 and 2. So quite a lot of concepts in that question and quite a lot of work to get those three marks. Feel free to go back and watch it again to help you get your head around it. Otherwise, last question, 2018 exam 2, question 6, part F. So before we look at part F, we probably should look at parts A to E. It's a statistical test question about water buffaloes. We're told the heights are normally distributed with a standard deviation of 15, and it's claimed that the mean is 150. Uh, the first question is to find suitable hypotheses H0, well that's the null hypothesis, and H1, that's the alternative hypothesis. Well, we're told that it's claimed the mean height is 150, so that's our null hypothesis. And for our alternative hypothesis, we just need to be careful, it is a one-tailed test here. So, as it's a one-tailed test, we should be using an inequality. So we'll be testing that the mean is less than 150. The wording is a little bit funny here as it says differs significantly uh, rather than less than, but it is a one-tailed test. Okay, part B, we're finding the standard deviation, so just sigma over root n. And the fact that it's the same as the one in the question we just did is a complete coincidence. Anyway. Uh, for part C, we're finding the p-value. So the p-value is the probability that we would be more extreme than our sample mean. So in this case, we want to be on the left of 145. We can find that probability on our CAS calculator. It turns out to be 0 0.0092. Now because that p-value is less than 0 0.05, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Part E is where it gets a little interesting, so we want the smallest value of the sample mean height that could be observed for H0 to be not rejected. We definitely need a diagram here. So the rejection region is the 5% on the left of that graph. We do not want to be in there because we do not want to reject, so we need to be just on the right hand border where I've called K there. In order to find that k value, we can use a inverse normal, and again we can do that on the CADS calculator. So we can find that k value to be 146.51. Okay, part F, the one you've been waiting for. If the true mean height of all buffaloes is in fact 145, what is the probability that H0 will be accepted? So the null hypothesis is false, but we're accepting H0. So it's a type 2 error question, and only 11% of students got this. To be fair, it was the last question on a long exam paper, but anyway. So from the previous question, we know that we would reject H0 if we were less than 146.5, okay? If we were in the rejection region, which is in the bottom 5%. Now, 
here we said we're not rejecting. So we're going to be to the right of that value. We want X bar to be greater than 146.5. So to find the probability a type two error occurs, because the null hypothesis is false, we need to know the true mean. And we are given a true mean here is 145 instead of 150. So we need now a new distribution with a mean of 145. The standard deviation we assume doesn't change. Now, in order to not reject, we'll need to be in that green region on the right of that K value. So all we need to do is find the probability on the second normal distribution that we're in that green region that is greater than 146.5. So once we understand it, it's just another normal CDF. We can calculate that on our calculator, uh, it's 0 0.24. But I think the diagrams are really useful there to actually understand the situation that we're using a new normal distribution curve and which region we're looking for on that curve. So I definitely recommend for, for these types of questions, you actually draw the diagrams during your exam. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. I think there's a high probability that you did.